Can you just move over to the centre so you know I'm there as well? Today we're going to teach you how to wear a beanie. You don't even have Maybe a microphone on. Just wants to be involved. Just, yeah. Extra homeless. You have to just lift it up. Lift it up. Right. Okay. Yeah, so it's proper hips. Then. Why are we wearing hats? We are here for the most hipster video ever. They forced me to wear a hat. Today we are delighted to be presenting the ZFC Rishi has brought from Nikon. Hey everybody. Uh, we're going to take a look at it. It is the uh, most hipster camera ever. That's why we're wearing the beanies. Uh, and we're going to have a look at the differences between that and other cameras that we've seen. And you're going to tell us a little bit Hopefully, yeah. about it. We've got the ZFC. Yep. I was expecting it to be called ZF, but yep. fine. They tagged the C onto the <laughs> end. Let's not go there. Um, and it's obviously a retro styled camera that's kind of the the concept very similar to the DF. Yeah. I brought here's one I made earlier. Right. <laughs> yeah. um, so why do you think the reason for that is we've got this kind of very retro styled Z camera now? I think the, the key thing is the change in technology from DSR to mirrorless. Mm. So it's kind of like Nikon saying, OK, well, this is obviously what we used to do with film cameras. Yeah. And this is what we now do still with DSLRs. And obviously the DF was that kind of retro style DSLR. Yeah. And it kind of then leads into the fact that, OK, Nikon are now doing pretty serious mirrorless cameras, they're expanding the mirrorless camera range. So it kind of then says, okay, well, let's, you know, look at making a kind of a retro style, a little bit different mm. mirrorless camera. So we're using that mirrorless technology and then turning it into that retro style, kind of the heritage aspect of what Nikon have done in the past with their older cameras. Right, okay. And so this, now, for those of you that don't know, though most of you will, this is a DX sensor camera. Yeah. So it's 20 megapixels, which is very similar to the Z50. Is it the same sensor or essentially? Um, I wouldn't say, say, say the same, same megapixel count. Mm. Um, similar to the megapixel count that you've been familiar with, with things like D500, yeah. 7500. So it's familiar for our DSLR users as well. Um, and, you know, it's a common megapixel count in Nikon DX cameras. Yeah, exactly. So. And do you think that's kind of the sweet spot now for, for DX bodies? For, for the Nikon range, absolutely. I think it gives you that really nice mix between a good amount of megapixels and then also really good kind of high ISO noise performance because mm. obviously if you start to increase your megapixel count, that can then start to affect your quality that you start getting at from high ISO. So it has that kind of FM3A mm -hmm. feel about it. We've got... Um, now with the FM3A, you've got your shutter speed dial in exactly the same place as we did with the DF, yep. which I like. They've very much mirrored that. In fact, even the position of the shutter button seems it's to be the in the same place. Yep. But they've added the video record button. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it was one thing that was very lacking in the DF, which yeah. a lot of people said, I don't want video. I don't care and about I, I it. I think at the time that was obviously purely by design. Mm. And I, I still get it now that there's so many people that I see, whether it's in comment sections or on social media, whatever it is, that say that they just want a stills camera. Yeah. But we did that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think in, today, with especially with mirrorless cameras, you know, video is going to be side by side with photography. Mm. So yes, you are right, the DF didn't have any video at all, it had all the video options removed, and it was just purely based on stills, but that is not the same with this new Z. Um, it is stills and video, 4K video recording, still good for video, still good for stills. And the uh, in terms of the controls and the layouts, all of that stuff is usable in video as well, I'm guessing. Yeah, so you 100%. can make it as tactile yep. as you like. Or as not tactile as you like, mm. if that makes sense, because yeah. you can still change all of those things in the menu. You can still just use your dials like you normally would. Um, there's a front and rear command dial. So if you wanted to use it that way, you can still do that. Yeah. Um, it's entirely up to you. Um, one thing that I did notice is that the old exposure compensation, so they've moved the, the ISO on the DF is obviously over here mm -hmm. as it is on the FM3A. And then the exposure comp is normally also over here, but on this one, they've popped it back in its position where it is on digital cameras <laughs> yeah. just to keep everyone on their toes. With the FM3A, it's also 
over here near the ISO. So this was, I mean, the reason I keep referring to the FM3A is because it was the last mechanical camera that Nikon ever produced, and it was only discontinued in 2003. So it's quite a, it's quite a new. young, yeah, yeah, it's a new <laughs> film camera yeah. um, by comparison. And it does definitely feel like the design was, was kind of yeah. captured from there. Unfortunately, I don't have one in front of me, but I've got a Nikon F, which is very simple in comparison. Yeah. Um, and then this is an FM2N, which is similar, but again, quite simplified. These look like... And when you start looking at the finer details, like you've been talking about the placement of dials, but mm. also, you know, the placement of just the bits of leather on here and yeah. so on. Um, just the design, you can see where the design cues have come from. Yeah, exactly. It's very true. And the back, one thing that I think is kind of cool is that you can make it look <laughs> like a film without camera. any screen yeah <laughs> so if you just wanted to have a viewfinder you can shoot it without any screen at all if you wanted to yeah and yeah. then of course if you have your image playback you mm -hmm. can still look at that through the viewfinder if you wanted to Although yeah. i personally find that very annoying but uh <laughs> <laughs> it's like i just want to look at sure. what i'm looking at but that is definitely an interesting design choice to just get rid of the yeah. screen altogether and i think the other benefit is obviously it's a completely articulating and flip screen so. yeah exactly yeah. great for selfies First for Zeds. So. <laughs> yes, it's yeah. true. So we've kind of uh, had the, do they call it a very angled monitor? Yeah, it's like yeah. A, or a tilting screen. Yeah. It tilts, right? But it doesn't flip all the way out. No. So if you do want selfie mode, then you've got it like that. Even the Z50 has that pull down screen. It does. Which is a little bit weird because it yeah. gets, you know, you've then got to have the special hot shoe, not hot shoe, sorry, the tripod foot mm -hmm. on the bottom on the side. Um, and then I noticed there's no grip. There is a grip. Well, on the camera. No. <laughs> but there's, but there's going to be a grip, or there is, yes. there is a grip. With so um, I'm not sure on availability of that, but there is a grip that will be available. Um, it is basically a, it screws into the tripod mount. Right. And then it just gives you that little bit of extra grip on the front of the camera mm. um, so that you can find it easier to hold. A little bit like the, the FA had that little yep. finger grip which yep. then people would lose and uh, <laughs> very difficult to get hold of. Yep. But just if you need that extra bit of something to yeah. hold on to. Yeah, I mean, um, I'm predominantly left-handed, so I generally carry a lot of the weight in my left hand anyway, mm. and my right hand tends to be free to change dials. Right. Um, that's generally the way that I've been shooting it. I've been kind of holding it in my left hand, using that if I needed to zoom in and out, or if I was shooting with a prime, then I would just have it in my left hand. And my right hand would go around and change these dials and obviously be my shutter button. Mm. But I do appreciate that for right-handed people or people who want to use it with their right hand, then obviously just that extra bit of grip would be really useful as well. It's going to be handy. One yeah. of the things that we get with sort of bigger handed photographers is that, and I don't have this problem so much, but <laughs> their finger sort of falls yeah. off the edge yeah. there. I always find that's like just about perfect for me. Um, I know when the DF came out, there were a lot of people saying the grip wasn't big enough. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting that Nikon have just decided to just <laughs> annihilate yeah. it altogether. I think it's. I think they've just gone down the route of it being an optional. So yeah. um, you know, you either have the option to put a grip on it or not. Yeah. You know, um, and compared to the original film cameras, you had the option with those as well. Yeah, right? it's so. true. You could put your big bulky motor yeah. drive on there if you wanted to. Um, now you've had a little bit of time with it yep. so far. I mean, I know, I know the Z50 is not your main camera. No, well, I do have one. I just don't use it as much as I use like my Z72 and Z62. I find it a really capable little camera. Yep. So if I were looking at, for example, I've got a Z50, I've got a Z6, and I just love the retro style. Mm -hmm. How does this fit in that range? you think I'd just get rid of my Z50? Or? Um, well, I think it depends on how much you love your Z50, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so there are definitely improvements, and the the key things are that this is kind of like a step above. So mm. there are a lot of things that um, might seem similar to a Z50 on a specification sheet, but there are a lot of things that have been added to this that the Z Z50 can't do, right. um, especially around autofocus. So eye autofocus in video as well. Sure. Yeah. Um, those are things that the Z50 just can't do. Um, longer shooting, longer shutter speeds mm -hmm. as well. Um, and obviously, like you said, the tactile dials, the, the exterior design, this yeah. is all round a different type of camera, if that makes sense. It does. Yeah. And I think if you pick up this camera, it's one of those, you can take your time with that as much as you like. Yeah. With the Z50, it's almost verging on a, you can put it into point and shoot mode. And that's probably one of the things that I would say about when I've been shooting with this. So literally, if I was to pick up any Z, it's quite well known that I know my way around a, a Z camera, but <laughs> yeah. if I was to pick up any Z, I would, I'd be able to change things on that very quickly. Mm. And 
not that this is necessarily a bad thing, but I find that this just causes you to think, oh, actually, you know what, I'm going to change it on this dial and I'm going to yeah. change my ISO over here. And you do find that you have that really nice thought process yeah. behind why you're changing those settings rather than just on a, a traditional Z. I'm just like, right, I'm changing that and it's done. Yeah. And you don't think really much of it. So exactly. yeah, I do think it does slow you down a little bit um, for a good thing. Um, and then it just makes you think a little bit more about the photography and why you're changing those settings as well. Yeah, which was very much the, the concept behind the DF as well. Yeah, it was like, right. look, we're going to take this almighty D4 sensor, we're going to put it in a camera that is much smaller, isn't a flagship body at all, mm -hmm. and we're going to tell you to just stop and <laughs> take a minute and decide on your shutter speeds and your apertures and everything. Um, so the first thing I noticed when I picked this one up was that the auto ISO was on, but if you turn that off, which you have to do through the menus, yeah. um, but then you've got your ISO dial up there. Mm -hmm. You've got your shutter speeds, which again, like the DF, you can put on to just kind of a back button shutter speed. So third st of a step, as it says on the, on the actual dial itself, but then you can manually control that all the way. Does it go all the way around? Yes, it does. Yep. Ah, it doesn't stop like on the old. It locks kind of. at at the um, third of a second. Yeah. yeah. Like that. <laughs>